now let's just answer this question that are there really infinitely many eigen vectors for identity matrix i what do you think the answer is yes actually yes so there are infinitely many eigen vectors for i and not just for this identity matrix actually for any matrix you take there are infinitely many eigen vectors for any matrix at uh, like uh, in uh, for, for that matter like you can take any matrix if there is at least one eigen vector then are then there are infinitely many i will i will tell you why but actually i i will tell you why that's not uh, that's not very interesting question but actually the interesting question is that how many of them are linearly independent see the answer here is that yes there are okay there are infinitely many eigen vectors eigen vectors for identity like uh, actually for any any matrix but uh, for now i'm talking about the identity matrix so yes identity 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 matrix i right there are infinitely many eigen vectors but that's not interesting right this is not interesting now interesting part is that how many of them how many of them are linearly independent okay how many of them are linearly independent that is the more important question that yes there are infinitely many but how many of them are linearly independent so what do you think so here i have this identity matrix like uh, let's suppose this is a 3 into 3 identity matrix and these kind of vectors are eigen vectors i mean any vector you take are uh, are eigen vector here so so for this identity matrix 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 you take any vector that vector is uh, eigen vector here right now now let's just take this vector which is 1 2 3 you take any vector which is let's suppose 2 4 5 you take any other vector which is let's suppose minus 1 minus 2 uh, minus 10 any any vector right the the thing is that that okay i mean there are infinitely many vectors which are eigen vector but how many of them are linearly independent you can actually answer that very very easily should i give you the hint the hint is that here this is in the r3 right every every vector is in r3 see this vector is in r3 this vector is in r3 so in r3 like you have all the vectors in r3 right you have all the infinitely many vectors in r3 whatever you can think of and how many of them are linearly independent in r3 you should by now you should be having the answer answer is 3 right in r3 you cannot have more than 3 so 3 linearly independent only three linearly independent vectors but this vectors are little special that's what we are calling it eigen vectors so let me just call it eigen vectors so three linearly independent eigen vectors right eigen vectors so that is how you can understand this that there are infinitely many eigen vectors actually for any matrix it is it is the case i will tell you why okay uh, but uh, for for now let's assume this as identity matrix only so for identity matrix there are infinitely many identity uh, infinitely many eigen vectors but how many how many of them are linearly independent then answer is just three just three because this is three by three identity matrix so these are these are then r3 so that's why just three linearly independent eigen vectors i hope you understood so uh, like uh, whenever we we say that okay uh, these are the two two eigen vectors or five eigen vectors then uh, then generally like uh, in, in in all the cases it means that there are infinitely many eigen vectors and we will not be interested in that okay how many total eigen vectors are there we will be more interested in that how many of them are linearly independent okay cool now uh, now let me let me post one question and let me see if you can answer that suppose suppose the question goes something like this suppose x is eigen vector eigen vector of a then then can you say that then a uh, kx k is some scalar okay kx is also eigen vector of a so this is true false right this question is true false so what they are saying is that if x is a eigen vector is x is an eigen vector of a it is given to me right it is given that x is an eigen vector which means what it is given that ax equal to lambda x isn't it it is given 
that ax is equal to actually lambda x so let me write here so see that ax equal to lambda x that is given to me and then what they are asking is that can you say that a into kx see if kx is eigenvector then what does this mean it must mean that a into kx if kx is eigenvector okay oh, let's let's forget everything if kx is eigenvector then then the a into kx should be should be equal to something into kx some scalar into kx isn't it that's how eigenvector is defined a into x equal to lambda x right so instead of x i have kx here so if if i need to prove that kx is also eigenvector i need to prove something like this a into so let's just check what is this a into kx okay so it is given to me this statement is given to me now let's just check check a into kx what is this a into kx so if you if you just uh, simplify this a into kx since k is a scalar you can you can write this scalar here you can write this here you can write anywhere a scalar uh, does not matter you can write in, uh, write anywhere a scalar which means you can write it k ax you can also write it uh, i mean ax k does not matter actually like a scalar uh, writing anywhere does not matter so you write it uh, let's suppose here and then this ax is given to you which is lambda x so you write it k into lambda x right and then maybe you can just shuffle it or maybe like just for the sake of writing okay so okay so finally you started with a a into kx and you finally got lambda into kx that must mean that kx is also eigenvector which means that if you have if you have see for any matrix okay for any matrix if x is eigenvector if x is eigenvector i'm i'm not taking any specific matrix it could be identity matrix but uh, it could, could could be any any matrix actually okay for for this particular uh, particular uh, sake of expression uh, i do not need to take any special matrix like identity matrix or something so let's just take a, a as any matrix and then you can have uh, let's suppose that this x is eigenvector which means that uh, you have the lambda x here now what i'm saying here is that now what you can do you can have Uh, not just x you can have two x also eigenvector why because you can just multiply two right you can just multiply two and this is also eigenvector because because you will say or see this is also eigenvector because two lambda is eigen value here eigen values will be different that is okay right i mean corresponding to x the eigen value is lambda but corresponding to two x okay so corresponding to two x the eigen value will be two lambda because see if you multiply if you multiply by two here okay so this is 2x you multiply by 2 here and then you multiply by 2 here also so corresponding to okay no uh, okay the eigen value is interestingly also same reason being is that you multiply 2 here so it is 2x which is which is a vector and then uh, yeah this is also uh, also 2x sorry yeah eigen value is also same interestingly right so so corresponding to lambda x is eigen vector that is true but corresponding to lambda 2x is also eigen vector isn't it so corresponding to lambda similarly 3x is also eigen vector so corresponding to lambda if x is eigen vector then 2x is also eigen vector 3x is also eigen vector 4x is also eigen vector everything is also like kx in general is also eigen vector so what does this mean it means that there are infinitely many eigen vectors if if this is just one eigen vector then it means there are infinitely many eigen vectors corresponding to this this lambda <coughs> but generally we are not interested in the, in the case that are there infinitely many we will just ask you the question like i mean i will i will uh, uh, solve some questions later but we will ask you the question that okay how many of them are linearly independent here it seems that everything can be generated by x so just one linearly independent but there will be some other cases also okay so i will not be interested that okay uh, how many eigen vectors are there because there are always infinitely many eigen vectors i will be interested that how many are linearly independent eigen vectors i hope uh, the problem objective is clear to everyone okay so that's how we will be approaching now uh, that's very easy actually like if x is eigen vector then kx is also eigen vector right now let's just answer this question if x is eigen vector then any non zero multiple of x is also eigen vector whether this is true or false i think we just solve it so you can uh, you can answer this question very easily which is true right which is true okay now let's go to the next problem or let's go to uh, let's go to the case that how to actually calculate the eigen values and eigen vectors so see we know that if <clears throat> x is eigen vector then it it satisfy this this particular equation let's just do one thing let's just take this lambda x on the le left hand side this ax minus lambda x 
will be zero and zero means this is a zero vector okay because everything is vector here this this is a vector ax i mean this completely ax is a vector x is a vector uh, a is a matrix but yeah completely x is a vector lambda is x is a vector so, and hence this zero is also a vector okay you take x common i mean the post common okay post common means that you take on the right hand side and then this will be lambda i because this is the matrix subtraction so a minus lambda i into x equal to this is zero cool i mean what i mean to say that these two equations are actually same i mean there is no difference between these two equations right but interestingly we can infer something from this equation see x is eigen vector and and I, as i told you x is eigen vector and i i told you that eigen vector are non zero right x is non zero so which means that i am having a minus lambda i into x equal to zero and that is possible using some non zero x what does this mean see what is what is this a minus lambda into x isn't it a linear combination of uh, columns of a minus lambda i see what i mean to say a minus lambda i into x equal to 0 okay this is the equation that i have here now this a minus lambda i is one matrix let's assume that this matrix is b okay i mean just for the sake of explanation i'm just assuming if if someone says you that bx equal to 0 and x is some non trivial solution right i mean x is non zero basically then what does this mean it means a linear combination of columns of B. Bx is linear combination of columns of B actually, right? That's what we did in the chapter 1. So Bx is linear combination of columns of B. It means that linear combination of columns of B is actually 0. Isn't it? So I can say that linear combination of columns of A minus lambda i is actually 0. Uh, I mean, uh, some non trivial solution exists. So basically, I can say that using the determinant that there will be, there will be, if I talk about the determinant, the determinant of A minus lambda i is equal to 0. See, if someone give you this equation and someone says x is non zero, non zero, from these two things, from these two things, you should infer, you should infer that a minus lambda i determinant is 0. Why? Because here, this a minus lambda i columns are linearly dependent. If these columns are linearly dependent, then it must mean the determinant is 0. Right? You should infer uh, in, in, infer this information from this particular equation. So ultimately, ultimately I can say that I was given with this equation and then I just rewrote this equation like this and from here I inferred that determinant of a minus lambda is equal to 0. Isn't it? So basically, if I have to solve for the eigenvalues, then I will be solving this equation. That is called characteristic equation. And then once I get the eigenvalue lambda, then I will be putting the eigenvalue here and I will be getting the eigenvector. So let me just tell you what do I mean by that. See, uh, we will be solving the characteristic equation. This is nothing but determinant of a minus lambda equal to zero. Right? And once I get the lambda, I will be putting the lambda into ax equal to lambda x. I will put the lambda here and then uh, I mean, I, I will tell you that how we are calculating this x basically like uh, I will be calc okay, uh, let me just tell you. So basically this a minus lambda i into x equal to 0, right? So basically if I have the lambda, then I have this a minus lambda i, which means I have this particular matrix b, right? So let's suppose this is b. So bx equal to 0. I just need to solve for x. And that's what we did. This is just a homogeneous set of equations, right? Homogeneous set of equations. So basically, first step is to get the lambda using the determinant and the next step is to solve uh, for the eigenvector using the homogeneous set of equations. Let's do some examples and after that it will be clear. So I have taken this uh, from Gilbert Stang book. So if you want, you can just read out this summary. The compute the a minus lambda i and then uh, find the lambda. And once you find the lambda, you just solve this uh, homogeneous system of linear equation and then you get the, your eigenvector x. That is the summary, right? Okay. Now, let's just go further. Let's just solve one question and let's just see if, if we are able to solve or not. So this is the first question where we want to solve for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is the very first question, which means that <laughs> before that we have not solved any question, right? Okay. So just give it a try. I know that this is very first question. You might not be able to do it and uh, logically I should be doing it, but I just want uh, you to just give it a try. Give it a try not only for the lambda, but for the x also. Okay. So give it a try for lambda and for the x. 
and let me know if you are facing difficulties to solve it like anyway we are going to solve in the next video but i just want you to solve before that okay just try it out okay